Cause I big on all the two like talk I need monster in human form Body man nobody like work But you must hustle if you want job If no finish then one fight us If then the hello guys welcome back again to my youtube channel my name is abiola and in today's video we'll be trying to recreate the rap skirts that we'll have on the left the one i recreated is the one on the right and guys the tutorial for the top i paired with this skirt is already up on the channel i'll have a link in the description box and i'll also have a link in the comment section without wasting so much of our time let us go straight into the video of today guys here is my pattern paper and it's on fold this is the full width of the pattern paper and I went ahead to fold it into two because we'll be drafting our skirt pattern on fold, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do guys is to mark out my starting line. I marked one inch to the top. This is where I'm going to be starting all my measurements from. So I'll go ahead to connect the line and after that I would now start drafting my skirt properly and what i'm going to mark next is 0.5 inch seam allowance and this 0.5 inch seam allowance is what I'm, i will be using to join the skirt part to the waistband after connecting the points to form a straight line i'll go ahead to label that part allowance my waistband is going to be 1.5 inches in width so to take my measurement i'm going to place that 1.5 inches on that red line which is the allowance line in order to take my hip point then i'll proceed to mark my hip point which is my waist to the widest part of my hip and that is measured 10 inches after marking my hip point, I'll proceed to mark the length of the skirt, which is going to be 28 inches. Then I'll go ahead to mark 29 inches, which implies that I added 1 inch seam allowance. As usual on this channel, I'll go ahead to mark all the points again just to get a straight line. 10 inches for my hip point, 28 inches for skirt length, and 29 inches for allowance. I'll label this point hip point. I'll label the second one skirt length, and I'll label the last line allowance line then i'll proceed to take my waist measurement divided by four my waist is 29 divided by four is about 7.25 and that is what i marked i will go ahead to add 1.5 inches for that and i will add 1.5 inch again as my seam allowance okay so for my hip my hip is 41 inches and 41 divided by 4 is 10.25 i'll go ahead now to mark 10.25 and after marking 10.25 i'll go ahead to add 1.5 inch seam allowance okay i'll go ahead now to use my ruler to connect the points now on the skirt length line the measurement on my hip point before i added my allowance which is 10.25 is what i'm going to go ahead to mark on that skirt length line and on the allowance line as well then i'll proceed to connect the points using my meter rule. after which i will go in with my scissors and cut out everything accurately at this point i am going to bring in another pattern paper because we are going to be drafting the front pattern twice okay we need two of the front pattern and what i'm going to do is to place the pattern i already drafted on top of the new pattern paper and i will go ahead to cut everything out exactly as it says without adding any allowance okay now it is time to take in my dart okay and i'm going to be dividing my nipple to nipple or bust pan measurement by two my nipple to nipple is 8 inches divided by 2 is 4 inches so what i'll go ahead to mark 4 inches at that point and remember i added 1.5 inches for my dart remember that so after marking 4 inches i'll go ahead to mark another 4 inches below just to get a straight line okay because the length of this dart is going to be 5 inches and we want it to be straight so i'll go ahead now to connect the point and note my 5 inches then i'll take 0.75 on each side of the line because if you remember the allowance i added for my dart is 1.5 inches so i'm going to go ahead now to mark 0.75 on each side of the line and i will connect it to that five inch length point at any point in this video if i tell you i'm taking my dart this is exactly what i'm doing okay the same way i marked my dart on this other paper i'm going to mark it on 
this new paper please endeavor to mark your dates because it is going to be very very important and it will come in handy in the steps to come now go ahead to extend the length of the dart to the end of the skirt that is to the skirt length proceed to do the same for the other pattern now let's go ahead to cut our back part before we alter the front part so what i'm going to do is to bring the fabric i will be working with which is this fabric i'm sorry this fabric is so rumpled but i'll still iron it but let's just cut out our back part first the first thing i will do is to try to minimize wastage i'm trying to get the exact um fabric that i need to cut out my back pattern i just needed the back to have zip allowance of about 1.5 inches okay as you can see the space at that point i tried to ensure that i got 1.5 inches um before the paper pattern so that i can use that to draft my zip allowance okay so i went ahead to pin the brown paper or the pattern paper on the fabric after which i went ahead to extend all the lines very very important extend all your lines and when you are done extending the lines proceed to five inches below the hip point and mark that point as well also extend the line at that point and the next thing you're going to do is to mark your zip allowance which is one inch at that point then at the hip point mark one inch plus 0.5 inch allowance for your bomb which is 1.5 on this point mark one inch as well and at the skirt length area and at the allowance area go ahead to mark one one inch respectively then go ahead to connect all the points together using your meter rule or your curved ruler as the case may be after connecting the points go ahead to cut out your back pattern after cutting out your back pattern proceed to notch your dart okay notch it because it will come in handy when you are transferring your dart to your fabric now go ahead and place the back pattern aside let us work on the front patterns first things first extend the hip line to the end and label it hip point so that you don't get confused then from that hip point come down by two inches and extend the line to meet with that that line that we drafted you know i came down by two inches but you can come down by any amount of um inch that you want you can decide three you can decide four if you want that part more covered you can decide to come down by any amount you want now we'll go ahead to create a curve just take a look at how i'm creating my curve i created the first curve and i wasn't okay then i went it. ahead to try to create a better curve can you see so i'll be working with the second curve now go ahead to add 0 0.5 inch round your pattern from beginning to the end remember i'm working with the second curve not the first curve i drafted so guys give this thing any shape you would like give let it just be anything you would like it to be like okay so i went ahead to add 0.5 inch round the part that i will be working with if you've watched any of my other skirt tutorials this step is a normal step and this step helps us with extra fit and it reduces excess fabric at the stomach area so come down by 0.5 inch from the waistline and take your curved ruler and connect from that point to the side seam then go ahead to trim it off using your scissors then go ahead to open up your pattern and trim out this other curvy part that we um just finished drafting and we're going to keep that pattern aside okay now let's work on this new pattern this labeling does not really matter to be honest but you can decide to label it left and right but it doesn't really matter i noticed later so what we're going to do now is to fold your pattern paper again and take your dart at the other side i mistakenly took a dart of one inch but I later corrected it the dart that we're working with is 1.5 inches extend the dart leg to the end and like i mentioned i went ahead to correct my dart as you can see first things first come down by 0.75 inch from 
that point and connect to the side area then from the 0.75 inch that you came down by come down by two inches come down by two inches and mark that point ignore the middle line okay then come down and come out by two inches from the dart leg at this point and then proceed to connect the points And just like we did for the previous pattern, go ahead and add 0.5 inch seam allowance round this point. Now let's cut out using our scissors. Can you guys see that our pattern is getting to what we need it to be? Okay, let's move to the next step. The next step is to go ahead and cut out the patterns. And I have gone ahead to cut out this front pattern one. And I'm going to go ahead now to transfer my dart from the paper to fabric. Guys, I'm not going to waste so much time on transferring your dart from paper to fabric there is a video i saw on youtube by vivian um okay, okay. i'll have a link in the description box so if you're a beginner and you do not know how to transfer your dart from your paper to your fabric i'll have that video linked in the description box so that you can check it out now we are going to be needing a fitting for this skirt so i'll go ahead to cut out a part of this paper that i think will be enough for my facing okay i realized that i got to a point and it was getting too small so i took my cello tape and taped it together so as to go ahead and recut that part so i'll go ahead to keep that aside once i'm done cutting i have gone ahead to cut out front pattern too and i added one inch seam allowance at the top for hemming okay so um i'm also going to cut out the part i'm going to use to cut out the facing and this is what i'm going to be making use of i went ahead to trim it properly and this is what i have do not forget to add one inch at the top as well so guys here are the ropes i'll be working with the ropes are about six inches in width the two of them in width and in length the rope is about 21 to 22 inches in length so what i'm going to do now is to fold them into two like they'll be on fold and i want the ropes to be two inches wide so i'll go ahead to mark two inches at the wrong side from beginning to the end so that when i go to my sewing machine to stitch it down i'm going to stitch exactly on that point so that when i turn it over i'm going to have a rope of two inches in width okay so like i told you the length is about 21.5 as i just showed so um i also marked 0.5 inch at the top side okay then at the second part i did the same thing on the second part now let's go over to the back pattern and at this point let us mark uh that okay remember i had notched the dart so it was just easy for me to um mark out the dart five inches in length ensure that when you are marking your dart you mark your dart at the wrong side of the fabric because that is where you will be stitching okay i have gone ahead to cut out the facing like i told you guys and here is what i have for pattern one and here is the facing for pattern two and i have gone ahead to add one inch seam allowance like i explained before now let's go ahead to place our facing on the skirt part we'll place them right sides facing each other and you will head over to your sewing machine and stitch round that circular area using the 0.5 inch seam allowance that we added you can also pin it down if you would like more accuracy when you head over to your sewing machine and you should also use the opportunity to take in your dart and to take in your dart you fold the dart this way and stitch on the line now over to the back pattern i would go ahead now to take in my darts as well like i said you fold it into two and you stitch on the line just like i have shown before now for the ropes using the lines that we already marked initially as a guide we'll go to our sewing machine and stitch at that point 
now i am done with stitching the ropes i'll go ahead now to trim off the excess allowance and when i'm done trimming off the excess allowance i'll go ahead to flip it over i'll do the same thing for the second rope and i'll go ahead to iron them on my ironing table i've gone ahead to stitch the interfacing to front pattern one and now i'll trim off the excess allowance then proceed to top stitch and in case you are a beginner and you do not know how to top stitch i will have a video linked in the description box on how to top stitch always top stitch towards your lining piece i will also go ahead to hem my facing before i proceed to use my hemming gum to press everything together and make the finishing look neat for the back pattern i have also gone ahead to take in my dart and now i am going to put the two right sides facing and mark my zip allowance out which is one inch i'm going to mark one inch from beginning to the end I'm sorry guys what i actually poured on this fabric when i was trying to iron my ropes so um for this one i'm going to come down by one inch before i attach my rope and on that one inch point i'll place the facing over it and i'll go ahead to pin it in place before i head over to my sewing machine to stitch using 0.5 inch seam allowance look at how i placed my rope i placed it from inside do you get and I placed my rope at the right side. I went ahead to pin the rope and the facing in place before I head over to my sewing machine to stitch using 0.5 inch seam allowance. And just like I explained for the front pattern one, once I am done um, stitching, I'll trim off excess allowance and I would also go ahead to top stitch before I come back. So guys, looking at front pattern one, I've gone ahead to top stitch and I've gone ahead to hem the facing just like I told you guys. I hem the facing using 0.5 inch allowance and here is front pattern two. I have top stitched and I've hemmed just like I told you guys. Now I'm going to proceed to my ironing table to iron everything using my hemming gum, okay? So here is how I'm going to iron them. I'll place the hemming gum within it like i'll sandwich the hemming gum at that interfacing area and i'll go ahead to iron and guys it is at your ironing point that you will see the importance of top stitching because you've top stitched it's easier to iron everything will just fall in place um i hope that is understandable i hope i explained this very well and just like i iron front pattern two i'll go ahead to iron front pattern one and i'll put in my hemming gum and you know iron it properly i have also gone ahead to join my zipper allowance and now i'm going to open the seams and iron it properly like once you do that um it's easier for you to fix in your zipper so guys the next step is to place my back pattern on the table right sides facing up and place front pattern one on top of it just like i am doing and i'm going to flip front pattern one to the side and pull my rope and my rope is going to go down by 0.75 so i'll measure 0.75 inch right and i will now place the rope I'm placing the rope inside look at how i'm placing my rope hole. it's facing the right side then i'm going to cover up that front pattern one and i'll pin it down i'll take it to my sewing machine to just you know stitch it down so that it doesn't move out of place and that's what you will see in the next frame yeah i have gone ahead to stitch it down just like i told you guys now guys let's go to the tricky part and i actually made a mistake at this point while attaching front pattern two guys go ahead to hem your front pattern two that one inch that we left at the top i've gone ahead to hem mine okay so now to the mistake i made and to the correction i just went straight to pin front pattern two on the back pattern and that is incorrect i'm going to show you the right way but you know there are a few things i explained at this point so i would like to explain that so when you join front pattern two it will have an excess other down which you should go ahead to cut out then i went ahead to mark out the 1.5 inch seam allowance that i added i marked it from beginning to the end 
okay so i had gone over to my sewing machine to stitch down everything before i realized that i had made a mistake now let us correct that mistake i went ahead to loosen front pattern 2 from where i attached it front pattern 2 is supposed to go underneath the front pattern one but i just placed it on top of it and i went ahead to stitch it like that and here is how you are going to place it you are going to place front pattern two 0 0.75 inches away from the back pattern just like you did for the rope at the other side then you will go ahead to place front pattern one over it and that front pattern one should match at the same level with the back pattern so the only one that is not at the same level with the two of them is front pattern one which is placed at 0 0.75 after the back pattern i don't know if you understand if you have any question please drop it in the comment section and i'm going to do well to reply as soon as i see your comment now i'll go ahead to stitch my allowance area and yeah let's go ahead and work on our waistband the interfacing i like to use for my waistband is the one called chest gum in the local market i'm going to measure my 1.5 inch at that point and i'm going to rip it apart this one is easy to cut apart the length of this waistband is about 40 inches more than we need but we'll trim it out later and the width of this waistband is about 7 inches it's more than we need but we'll trim it later okay so we'll be using the stitch in a ditch method to attach our waistband first of all place the interfacing and i'll leave 0 0.5 inch allowance at the top of the waistband before i attach my interfacing i'll go ahead to iron the interfacing in place like i said leaving 0 0.5 inch seam allowance at the top just like you see me doing once i'm done ironing the waistband like you see me doing i'll go ahead to fold the waistband this is also very important it's going to you know make attachment of our waistband easy so i'll go ahead to fold the waistband just like you see me doing and i'm going to iron it in place like i'm trying to form a crease at that point where the interfacing stopped okay in order to attach your waistband flip your skirt to the right side okay and once you have flipped your skirt to the right side you're going to place the waistband against the skirt right sides facing each other using the 0 0.5 inch that you left as a guide you can go ahead to first off tie the rope so that it doesn't disturb you so you place them right sides facing each other just like i'm showing you guys then you will go to your sewing machine and use that 0 0.5 inch as a guide and stitch round the waistband remember we are making use of the stitch in a ditch method so go ahead and pin your waistband down properly then head over to your sewing machine to stitch it round at this point i have gone ahead to stitch my waistband round and can you see what i have it's already looking very very neat i also went ahead to trim off the excess which i didn't show on camera this is just what i did i trimmed off the excess okay now let's finally finally fix our waistband using the stitch in a ditch method so here is what you're going to do you're going to fold this in just like i'm showing you then fold the waistband this way but we are stitching from the front we are stitching in the hole from the front so you can go ahead to pin everything down before you stitch but for me i have been using this method for a long time so i do not have to pin before i stitch so you will keep going ahead to fold and keep stitching from the front in that ditch if you stitch in the ditch you realize that you don't have any seam in front by the time you are done your seam is only going to appear at the back okay so you go ahead to stitch in that ditch then continue to pin pin from beginning to the end just like i have shown you okay make sure you put the allowance inside so that it looks very very neat i'm going to go ahead to stitch mine and i'll show you what i have when i'm done 
so guys here is what i have when i was done stitching can you see the insides of my waistband how it looks very neat this is what stitch in a ditch method does for you okay nice time to attach a zipper and at the same time it is time to go ahead and also hem the base of this skirt okay so can you see if you check the front you can basically not find any seam in front because we stitched in the ditch okay so guys there's something i want to talk about when we attach our waistband using the stitch in a ditch method before we finally attach the waistband we ought to fix our zip in order to get a perfect finishing we ought to fix our zipper first before just to get the perfect finishing but i did not show that in this video because um i just wanted to go through the easy route so guys if you want me to show you this stitching and ditch method properly on my sewing machine and you want me to show you how to ensure that you fix your zipper in a way that it looks neater and it looks like all those ready to wear you see in the market um leave me comments in the comment section and i would work on that tutorial if it's something you're interested in let me know in the comment section guys because um this method i'm using now is just you know the regular everyday method when you are done you fix your zipper but to make sure we get a perfect finishing we ought to fix our zipper before finally covering our waistband now i'm going to go ahead to backstitch at this point then proceed to attach my zipper and also hem the skirt thanks guys for watching this tutorial and i'll see you in my next video guys bye Big on